yo, what's up nerds? It's MTG Man, and welcome to Kitchen Table Showdown. $20 decks, hopefully the prices didn't go up on any of these, because I have been away for a good bit now. Um, I was sick for a little while, and then I've just been busy, and life, and you know, shit like that. So, uh, Kitchen Table Showdown's back, $20 decks, all that, let's go. Um, first up is Elves, and this is not a $20 deck, hold on, hold on real real, real. All right, great. Fixed it. Uh, so, elves. Um, how's this deck work? Well, you swarm the field with elves. Uh, duh. That's how every elf deck works. Uh, we use Beast Whisper to help keep our hand full. Uh, plus, it's an elf. Elvish Mystic, um, Lanoir Elves, and Priest of Titania for ramp. Um, you're going to create a lot of mana. Uh, Priest of Titania, it's like 5-6 mana every time. Um, Liz Solana, uh, Huntsmaster is gonna help you flood the board with elves. Gem Palm Strider is help you win the game with your board of elves. Elvish Warmaster, again, to help you flood the board with elves and to help you close out games. Elvish Visionary, because it just draws a card on top of being an elf. Um, we also have Instruments of War. You name elf, it pumps up all your elves. Uh, Lifecraft, Life Crafter's Bestiary. It's just another way to keep drawing um, with your elves. Elven Ambush to flood the board. Lull is just a... It's a fog that you can cycle. Um, Return to Nature's Removal. Adventure Awaits and Winding Way to get elves into hand. Um, and then 20 Forests. Simple-ass game plan. You, you basically always keep your first hand because it's always good. Then you go Elvish Mystic. Uh, we go Priest of Titania. Um, and from here, we Elvish Warmaster, uh, tap Elvish Visionary, which will create another 1-1 one, one Elf from Elvish Warmaster. Priest of Titania now taps for, is it for each, it's just for each Elf. So Priest of Titania taps for 5, uh, we tap for Elven Ambush and create 5 more Elves, uh, so now Priest of Titania will tap for 10 next turn. Um, we play Instruments of War. All of our elves get plus one, plus one. And then we basically could just swing all 10 elves and deal 20 damage. That's it. That's how the deck works. It's, it's literally the same as every elf deck. Um, very efficient. I'm probably putting it in, you know, A tier. It's pretty strong. Um, next up, what's not strong? Overcomplicated. Um... It's also over budget. Ha 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 ha. Ugh. Ugh. Um. And by that I mean it's on budget. Um, so how does this deck work? Well, it's very overcomplicated. Uh, what it does is it takes pain magnification, uh, where whenever an opponent is dealt three or more damage by a single source, they discard a card. Um, and then McGrim deals two damage whenever an opponent discards a card. Well, then we just use something like Artist Talent or um, the Backside uh, Disciples of Inferno um, in order to make it deal 4 damage instead of 3, or instead of 2. And then since 4 is more than 3, they'll discard a card, which means McGrim will trigger again. Um, and then we use cards like Mind Lash Sliver, Liliana Steward, Elder Fang Disciple, uh, Funeral Charm, and Culligan's Command in order to make the opponent discard cards to, like, start the loop, basically. Um, ca cathartic Reunion in order to get cards to hand. Uh, Reckless Abandon is going to help us uh, kill Invasion of Ragatha. Um, we can also make them discard with Gyre Reach Sanitarium. And then Mountains, Swamps, and Artist Talent is also just a good way to gain value, discarding cards, drawing cards, all that. Wizards Rockets, color fixes, and just draws those cards. Um, it's a very, it's an overcomplicated game plan. Um, I built this deck because I thought it was funny, um, but it, it's not good. Um, so this hand has almost everything we want, so we're just going to go for it. We're going to go Mind Lash Sliver. Um, go for Artist Talent, so whenever we play a non-creature, we can discard and draw. Um, I think... Uh, we do not want a cathartic reunion here. We do want a cathartic reunion here. Uh, discard, draw, 
Um, and then because we get an artist talent trigger, we'll discard McGrim, uh, draw, um, go to turn five. Uh, we'll play Wizards Rockets, um, play a mountain, run, run out pain, uh, play a swamp, draw a card with Wizards Rockets, um, play McGrim, um, draw a card with Wizards Rockets, um, rank up artist talents, so now our non-creatures cost one less, um, go up with, sorry, go up with artist talent, so now our sources deal two more damage, um, and then, yeah, now we just sacrifice Mind Lash Sliver, um, McGrim will deal four damage, they will discard a card, McGrim will deal four damage, and as long as they have five cards in hand, they lose. Um, as you can tell, not good. Um, I'm putting it in the flawed tier, Theoretically, it could win a game, but uh, it's it's a little fucky. Um, next up is Stagnation Lock. So we use Mist of Stagnation, uh, where permanents don't untap during their controller's untap steps, and at the beginning of each player's up upkeep, that player untaps a permanent for each card in his or her graveyard. Um, so we get it to hand by transmuting Brain Spoil. Um, we run it out as fast as possible with High Tide, um, and then... We basically just keep our opponent's graveyard empty with things like Bogart Trawler, um, Remorseful Cleric, uh, Tormod's Crypt, and Pajukabog. Um, as long as their graveyard's empty, they can't play cards. And then we also have cyclers like Opt, uh, Wizards Rockets, and Street Wraith to help keep our graveyard full so that we'll keep on tapping. Uh, Moonbless Cleric is the other way to tutor up Mists of Stagnation. Landwise Bajukabog to remove graveyards. Irrigated farmland, islands, plains, uh, and prairie stream. The deck mostly runs islands. Um, irrigated farmland is good too because you can cycle it to your graveyard uh, in case you need to untap more shit. So I think this is a hand we keep. Um, it hurts to do it. We're just going to cycle Street Wraith to start. We're going to cycle Street Wraith. Um, we're going to play a tapped bogart trawler um we're going to bajukabog remove their graveyard um and then play an island the other thing about the non-basic lands is that they still have the island type uh so when we use high tide it'll uh, add additional blue mana we're gonna brain spoil um we transmute it so we get to search our library for a card with mana value five um, we're going to take Mist of Stagnation to hand. We're going to shuffle. We go to turn four. Um, Prairie Stream. So we don't have two or more basic lands, so Prairie Stream comes in tapped. Um, we will opt. Scry one. Uh, Moon Bless Cleric. We'll put it at the bottom of the library and we'll draw a card. Um, and then from here... I think we have to play another Prairie Stream. Um, yeah. Play another Prairie Stream. Um, run out a Remorseful Cleric so we can remove their graveyard next turn. And then... Miss of Stagnation. Bajukabog removes their graveyard. And they won't untap anything next turn. So, basically we've locked down their board... Um, and then we can just start swinging in with Remorseful Cleric since it's a flyer, um, or basically anything else. Um, you know, play another Remorseful Cleric, swing in, and every time they do play something to try and, like, refuel their graveyard, um, we just remove it by sacrificing a Remorseful Cleric. Uh, that is the good thing about this deck, too. So, Street Wraith is evasive with, um, Swamp Walk on top of being cyclable. Uh, Remorseful Cleric has flying, and Moonbless Cleric, though not great, and Bogart Trawler isn't great either. Um, they'll exile a graveyard, search for our mists, and they're just okay beaters to help get in while the opponent can't do shit. Um, Stagnation Lock, very okay game plan. I think I'm going to put it in good. Uh, next up is Rad Rat. 
Rad Rat is a cycling deck, so you want to cycle as many cards as possible or mill cards with Undead Butler. The thing with Undead Butler, too, is when it dies, you can get a card back to hand that you just recycle. Um, Wizards Rockets, you can cycle. Cremate, uh, Fade from Memory, Scarab Feast. And then we benefit and add a shit ton of mana with Bubbling Muck and Songs of the Damned. Um, Cemetery Tampering, also for um, Mill. And then once we have our shit. I just removed one Cemetery Tampering and put in a Fade from Memory uh, to get the budget under. But, um... Anywho, once we have a graveyard that's all full, uh, we play Ruthless Rad Rat, and then you can pay its squad cost of exiling four cards from your graveyard any number of times, um, and you create that many token copies the number of times it's paid. So if we exile 16 cards, we get uh, five Rad Rats total, and they have Menace, so theoretically they can swing in for good damage. Um, just to show off the game plan, we play a Swamp, we are going to cycle Lurching Rot Beast. We will cycle Street Wraith by paying two life. Um, cycle Scarab Feast. Cycle Lurching Rot Beast. Um, cycle Lurching Rot Beast. Cycle um, Baron Moor. Cremate to draw a card. Exile a card from the opponent's graveyard. Um, and then Songs of the Dam 2. We can just keep cycling cards if we're lucky, um, and it's just how we rack up a, a big count. Wizards Rockets enters tapped. Um, play a Swamp for turn. Cycle Scarab Feast, draw a card. Uh, cycle Street Wraith, draw a card. Cycle Scarab Feast, draw a card. Uh, Wizards Rockets for zero, draw a card. Um, I think here we'd play Songs of the Damned, we don't really need the mana, but we'll use the mana to play Ruthless Rad Rat, and then we'll exile our graveyard, creating uh, three token copies of Ruthless Rad Rat, um, and then next turn we just start cycling um, and swinging in with our token copies. Since we have five total, um, unless the opponent starts blocking them, um, we'll win in two turns. I mean... They have Menace, so they're just like a little bit harder to block. Theoretically, a good number of them will be able to get in. Um, but yeah, very simple game plan. Um, I'd probably put it in the good tier. Uh, next up is, I just called it Strange, um, because that's what this deck is. So, what's it do? Um, it uses Rites of Spring to discard your hand and search for, hopefully, 10 lands that you then discard with seismic assault um, and win the game. Uh, how do you get a you know how do you get a hand with ten land or with uh, ten cards to discard? Well, we use cards like take inventory, uh, frantic inventory, accumulated knowledge, um, things like that that are just going to add more cards than um, you know than we discard one card by playing it, but we draw hopefully two three um, overall. Wizards Rockets is cyclable and helps us color fix. Orcish Lumberjack is going to add um, a bunch of mana, which can just be necessary. Especially, we can sacrifice one forest to add uh, three red, which will be exactly what we need for Seismic Assault. Um, Cathartic Reunion to help us just like get through the deck. Gush is actually really helpful because it returns two islands to hand. Um, so that's two lands we can discard and drawing two cards, so we basically went up four in hand size. Um, Beast Within is removal. Uh, we just need something that can really hit everything, so Beast Within hits perfectly, plus uh, Orcish Lumberjack can add three green mana to just play Beast Within. Um, and then Evolving Wilds, Forests, Islands, and Mountains. It's a very strange game plan, I guess. Um, I don't think we keep this. I do think we keep this. Um, we will put Seismic Assault to the bottom. We're going to play an island. We're going to play a mountain. We're going to Cathartic Reunion. Uh, discard two. Draw three. Um, I forgot to mention Nature's Claim for removal too. But um, uh, Accumulated Knowledge to draw a card. We will... Wizards Rockets, 
Uh, play an island for turn. Um, I think Wizards Rockets for zero, draw a card. Uh, Cathartic Reunion, um, Nature's Claim and Rites of Spring, draw three. Um, we'll play Accumulated Knowledge. We will draw two off of it. Uh, play a forest. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, take inventory to draw a card. Uh, accumulated knowledge will draw us three. So one, two, three. Um, and then from here, we can play Gush, return to... Actually, I think we'd wait on Gush. Yeah. We play Wizards Rockets um, to color fix. And then uh, go one, two, three into Wizards Rocket. Actually, one, two, three into Wizards Rockets uh, to play Seismic Assault. Then we will, I think we're all good to gush, return them to our hand, draw two cards, um, play Rites of Spring. Um, yeah. Discard one, two, three. Four. Discard five. Search our library for five basic lands. Uh, move them to our hand. And then we just discard uh, all nine basic lands from our hand to seismic assault, um, dealing 18 damage. Um, and then draw for turn, discard evolving wilds, that's 20 damage, and the opponent is dead. Um, overall, it's very weird, but it actually works kind of well. I'm just going to put it in the good. I really enjoy the game plan. Um, I enjoy just, like, non-conventional win cons to begin with, so, um, it's definitely up my alley. Uh, next up is Demigod. So, Demigod uses Demigod of Revenge. Uh, when you cast it, you return all cards named Demigod of Revenge from your graveyard to the battlefield. Well... We use things like Buried Alive to get all of our Demigod of Revenge into the graveyard. Um, and then as soon as we play one of them, we'll have 20 power with Flying and Haste on the board. And theoretically, we win. Um, Undead Servant is kind of an alternative. It's less good, but if we Buried Alive the other three copies of Undead Servant, um, we'll put uh, 9 power on the board for 4 mana, which isn't bad. Um, Chromatic Star and Wizards Rockets to, uh, you know, color fix for Demigod of Revenge, even though we don't really need it, um, since it's black or red. Um, mostly just to draw. Dark Ritual to help us play Buried Alive faster. Songs of the Damned is, like, another ritual, um, just so that we can get out Demigod of Revenge as fast as possible. Uh, Lightning Bolt for removal. Cathartic Reunion to help us discard extra copies of Servant or Demigod. Um, same with Faithless, Faithless Looting, and then Raise Dead in case, like, if we were to discard our Demigod, um, or our opponent makes us discard it after we've already buried alive, um, the rest of them, then we'd be kind of screwed. So, uh, Raise Dead's just kind of a backup, and then Mountains and Swamps. Uh, very simple game plan. Very, very simple. So, we go Mountain, we go Wizard's Rockets, we pass, we go, um... Swamp, Chromatic Star, Crack Chromatic Star, draw a card, Crack Wizards Rockets, draw a card. Um, we have the floating mana from the Chromatic Star. We'll play Wizards Rockets, enters tapped. Um, there's our Demigod of Revenge, so we're going to play a Swamp. We'll crack Wizards Rockets. We are going to Cathartic Reunion, uh, discard the Undead Servant and Cathartic Reunion, draw three cards. Now we have a Buried Alive in hand. Um, we have, we will Dark Ritual, um, play Buried Alive, search our library for three copies of Demigod of Revenge, uh, that is, yeah, where's our, where's the third copy, oh, there it is, so we move those to the graveyard, and then we shuffle, um, then we go to turn four, uh, play a Dark Ritual, so we have three black floating, black, red, that's five mana total, so we'll play Demigod of Revenge, uh, that's gonna let us bring back two, three, they all come back to the battlefield, 
And look at that. They're all 5-4s flying haste, so they can swing immediately. And that's 20 power coming at the opponent turn 4. Um, overall, I think it might be a little too efficient. I'm putting it in strong. Um, strong is either too efficient or wins too fast, all right? Um, or, I guess, like, just too much of a consistent game plan, too. Uh, the thing with Kitchen Table Showdown is I like a little bit of inconsistency. I think that makes more interesting decks. Um, but, yeah. Next up is Magic Number 3. Um, I really just thought Pain Magnification was interesting, so I built a couple decks around it. Um, this one... Uh, you want to deal exactly three damage in order to get pain magnification triggers, and it's just a consistent burn game plan uh, with a side of discard. Uh, so Furnace Scamp, when it deals combat damage to a player, you can sacrifice it to deal three damage to that player. Iron Crag Pyromancer is going to burn for three uh, whenever you draw your second card each turn. Lightning Phoenix is going to come back when three or more damage is dealt. Uh, Wizard Rockets for draw. Cathartic Pyre is just a removal spell that will draw you cards. The other cool thing is Cathartic Pyre you can use on your opponent's turn, so you can get uh, multiple Iron Crag Pyromancer triggers. Uh, Searing Blood is going to burn for 3 after you kill something. Lightning Bolt burns for 3. Lightning burns for 3 and makes them discard. Sign in Blood is draw. Uh, Frenzied Rage is kind of... It, it serves two purposes. Um, one, Iron Crag Phoenix will become a 4-3. Um, so it's going to be hitting above 3 damage, and it'll be able to trigger um, Pain uh, Magnification. The other thing it does is you could use it on Furnace Scamp to give Furnace Scamp Menace, and then that just helps it get in better. So you'll deal 3 damage by swinging in uh, because it has plus 2, plus 1, so that'll be 1 Pain Magnification trigger. And then if you sacrifice it, it'll deal another 3 damage, so that'll be another trigger. Um, it's just giving you more options. Of course, Pain Magnification, uh, Immerstrom, uh, Skull Karen, because it deals 3 damage, which is exactly how much we want, and it discards. Again, this is just a burn discard, like, mashup. It's funky. Um, and then Mountains and Swamps. So this is a hard deck to illustrate without, um, like, an opponent. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna show you. So, uh, Immercraft, Skull Thingy Mabob, um, then we're gonna play a Mountain. Uh, then we're gonna play a Iron Crag Pyromancer. Um, we will play. Mm, Iron Crag Pyromancer. Um, Swamp. We are gonna play a Blightning. It burns the opponent for three, and they discard two cards. Um, then we are going to Cathartic Pyre. Uh, discarding two cards, drawing two cards. Uh, since we discarded, or since we're drawing our second card for turn, uh, each Iron Crag Pyromancer trigger, so that will be six damage totally opponent, plus the three from Blightning, so they're at 11. Um, go to turn six. We are going to play a Phoenix. We are going to play a Blightning. They discard two, um, and it deals three damage. We could also swing... Not really. We cannot swing. I kind of forgot they were zero fours. I thought they were one fours. Um, I think the best course of action here might actually be uh, just cracking the Immerskull Skull Karen uh, or Immersturm Skull Karen, whatever, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, so they discard a card, deals three damage. Uh, we swing in with Iron Crag Phoenix or Lightning Phoenix. Jesus Christ. I'm not even tired. Well, I'm, I am tired, but, like, whatever. Um, so that was, let's see, so three, 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 nine, 12, 15, 17, and then we would just swing in again with Phoenix. Um, it has haste, swing, swing, and they're dead. Um, it's just a little too goofy. I think it's probably C tier. Um... Yeah. Next up is Suspend Betrayal. Um, oops. So Suspend Betrayal um, uses two uh, particular Suspend cards, that being Inevitable Betrayal and Dichotomy. 
So Inevitable Betrayal suspends for three turns, and then after that you search your opponent's library for a creature card and put that card onto the battlefield under your control. You basically just want to get whatever the biggest, baddest thing in their deck is. Um, you know, and these decks are meant to face off against each other, so that could be a Demigod of Revenge, which is only really going to do you so much good. Um, you know, it could be Kiki Cheeky, it could be... Uh, there really isn't much in the Amalia deck. Uh, it could be Omnispell Adept. Um, you know, it's whatever. You take their biggest, strongest creature, or you take a combo piece, um, and then either swing in with it, or hopefully get the other parts of the combo. Um, Dichotomy, for each tap non-land permanent target opponent controls, search their library for a card with the same name and put it under play uh, under your control. So the thing is, your opponent is probably never going to tap things the turn before you play Dichotomy. Um, so you use cards like Diluge and Ensnare that are going to tap your opponent's creatures. Well, it really just taps all creatures, but you're going to tap your opponent's creatures so that when Dichotomy hits, um, you'll be able to just search their library for every creature on their board um, and, you know, basically mirror their board. Um, Serum Visions is draw propaganda to stop your opponent from attacking withers rockets for draw and then we use cards like time beetle to time travel time bender to remove counters and make suspending faster and jehoira's time bug is just another way to de-suspend cards faster um spell pierce to protect our suspended spells and then just 20 islands um very it's i don't know how the fuck you're supposed to show off this deck um so I think some part of me wants to play Timebender just so we have a creature on board, but I think we just wait. Um, we're going to play Time Beetle. Um, now we suspend Dichotomy. Um, so that's one counter down. We are going to morph Timebender. And then at this point, if our opponent was... Uh, stupid enough to tap any of their creatures. Um, we could unmorph Timebender to play Dichotomy early. Otherwise, we're kind of hoping for a way to tap our opponent's shit, but that doesn't look like that's happening, so I don't think we get anything off of Dichotomy. Uh, we'd play another Time Beetle. The other thing, too, is you could just swing in with Time Beetles. Um, it's a very slow win con, but they have Skulk, so they're definitely not being blocked. Um, and yeah, that was really shitty um let's just try it again we'll go serum visions scry two, draw a card we're gonna put these two on bot we're gonna put the uh time bender on bottom we're gonna draw the island um we're gonna island time beetle pass um island uh serum visions look at the top two put them on the bottom draw a card uh joyra's time bug Island, um, Time Beetle, Time Beetle, Swing, well, Swing with this one, um, Joyra's Time Bug, and in this case, we haven't drawn any of our Suspend Spells, so definitely, I'm gonna put this in the f Flood tier, it's hard to just show off that deck to begin with, but, um, it definitely is gimmicky. Um, next up is Thunderkin. Uh, Thunderkin uses Thunderkin Awakener. Uh, when it attacks, you choose an elemental card with toughness less than its toughness. Uh, return to the battlefield tapped and attacking and sacrifice it the next end step. Um, what, how, uh, what cards have less toughness than two? Um, you know, Spark Trooper, Lightning Skelemental, and Bald Lightning. Basically, these big creatures that are just going to swing in for one turn anyway. Um, and then Flamekin Harvester is just another way to get more cards, and it happens to have less toughness. Um, you play your Thunderkin Awakener, you swing as fast as possible, and then you find ways to get these cards into the graveyard without having to cast them anyway. Um, Wizards Rockets and Chromatic Star are going to help us fix for things like Spark Trooper and Skelemental. Uh, Abrade is Removal. Buried Alive to get your elementals into the graveyard. Cathartic Reunion and Faithless Looting to help us discard cards and get them back in the graveyard. Um, and then Unearth, because, fun fact, uh, well, 
Spark Trooper doesn't, but Lightning Skelemental, Harbinger, Ball Lightning, and Flamekin Awakener are all less than three mana value. Um, so we can unearth them, and it's just a really fast way to deal damage. Um, we're also playing Access Tunnel and Escape Tunnel because we want Thunderkin Awakener to be able to swing in without dying so that we can just keep attacking. Then Evolving Wilds, Mountains, Plains, and Swamps. There's only one Plains because Spark Trooper is the only white card, um, and we can just use Chromatic Star and Wizard's Rockets to get that white mana. Um, but yeah, overall, odd game plan. Um, I think we would keep a, la a hand like this. We go Chromatic Star, um, Thunderkin Awakener. I think we just crack the Chromatic Star for the draw. Um, Wizard's Rockets, Chromatic... Well, okay. Chromatic Star, sack it, draw. Use the mana that we sacked it with to play a Wizard's Rockets. Play an Escape Tunnel. Um, play an Escape Tunnel. Um, uh, no, don't play an escape tunnel, play a cathartic reunion, actually, no, cause, ah, ah, <laughs> um, I kind of forgot that escape tunnel is just an evolving wild, basically, um, I think here, we, cathartic reunion, one, two, draw three, um, crack escape tunnel for a planes, where'd the plane, oh, there's the planes, move planes to the battlefield, um, go to turn five. Now we use Wizards Rockets to fix for Ball Lightning, uh, draw a card off of Wizards Rockets, uh, swing with Ball Lightning for six. Um, I guess Cathartic Reunion, discarding Skelemental and Spark Trooper, drawing three, uh, play a Mountain, play a Thunderkin Awakener, go to Combat, swing, Spark Trooper comes back. Uh, Spark Trooper swings. It has lifelink as well, so we'll also be gaining life. Um, and then at this point, we just Faithless Looting, discarding Skelemental, and Buried Alive. Draw two. Well, we would have drawn first, but whatever. Um, Spark Trooper had to be sacrificed at the end of the last turn. Play another Awaker, Awakener. Play a Wizard's Rockets tapped. Swing with those two Awakeners. We'll bring the X Skelemental and Spark Trooper to the battlefield. They're going to swing for 6, 12, and then basically you're kept alive because you're just going to keep gaining 6 life from Spark Trooper. Your opponent's going to keep having to discard cards from Lightning Skelemental, and then theoretically you just deal enough damage to win over time. Um, it's weird. I'm going to put it in good tier. I just really like the deck, so um, yeah. Next up is Blood. Um, so, blood just, uh, you know, it accrues value by creating blood tokens, um, as the name would suggest. Uh, you can use things like Shilengar, Shil- Shilgangar? What? We talk in Pokemon? But, um, anywho, you sacrifice six blood tokens, and you can bring back all of your creatures as vampires. Uh, they're kind of vampires usually anyway, um, but- you know, Anhe, uh, made of Dishonor, is going to create you blood, and then you can also sacrifice them to burn your opponents. Blood Tithe Harvester is going to be creating you blood, and then it can be a kill spell for, you know, however, mo however much blood you have. Uh, Falcon Wrath Forebear uh, creates you blood, and then you can um, trans uh, not transform. You can return it to the battlefield if it dies, um, you know, by sacrificing blood. Moonstone Eulogist is going to create you blood, and then it's going to get bigger and gain you life whenever you uh, sacrifice blood. Voldaren Bloodcaster creates you blood whenever things die, and then if you create blood and have five or more, which you probably will eventually, um, she'll become a 3-3 that can turn your blood into creatures that can attack. Voldaren Epicure burns and creates blood. Blood Fountain creates blood. 
uh, glass cast heart. Um, you can sacrifice it and 13 blood tokens to deal 13 damage. Well, not deal 13 damage. An opponent loses 13 life. Um, and it also just create you blood when you attack. Sanguine Statuette creates you blood and then can become a 3-3 with haste. Um, Pointed Discussion draws you cards, creates you blood. Uh, Vampire's Kiss creates you blood. The cool thing about blood, too, is it's going to help you cycle through your deck. Um, Arterial Alchemy turns your blood into equipment. Sure, you're only going to create one blood from it because you... Um, uh, only have one opponent but each blood being able to equip to give plus two plus zero can really bump something with flying up like falcon wrath forebearer and help you swing in for games and then black cleave cliffs mountains swamps and then Volterran estate uh since there's so many vampires in the deck you can also just tap it for blood okay so this is another deck that's kind of interesting to demonstrate without um an opponent or tokens um so we're not gonna keep we keep put um sanguine statuette on the bottom we're gonna play a voldaren estate we're gonna play a voldaren estate um we're going to pay two life play blood tithe harvester creates one blood token um i'm just trying to check i don't know if there's there's no oh tokens Okay, so we're going to create a blood. Cool. That actually makes it a lot easier. Um, I wish I would have known that sooner. Um, we're going to play a Voldaren Bloodcaster. Um, swing in for three with Blood Tithe Harvester. Um, I think go to next turn. Play a Swamp. Play a Falcon Wrath Forebearer. Um, swing for three. Swing for five. Go to next turn. Um, I think best course of action is play a Vampire's Kiss, creating two more blood tokens. Um, we will swing. Um, when Falcon Wrath Forebear deals combat damage, which it probably will because it has flying, we get to create another blood token. I'm going to assume uh, Blood Tithe Harvester is probably dying during combat, so we'll create another blood token, which should be enough to one, two, um, transform Valderin, uh into Blood Bat Summoner. Um, I think we'll cycle one blood token to discard and draw. We will play that mountain because we need lands. We'll play a swamp. Um, I think we run out on a, uh, Maid of Dishonor. Um, so when she enters, we create a blood token. And then we can just swing for combat. Uh, all of our damage is in the air. Plus our blood token can become a 2-2 bat with flying in haste. Um... And overall, you just kind of gain value over time with blood. Um, I just think blood tokens are cool. So I I just, yeah, that that's where this came from. Um, next up is Vantress. Vantress is a Vantress Gargoyle deck. Um, and cards that are similar to Vantress Gargoyle, where uh, when your opponent has so many cards in their graveyard, they become good cards. Uh, so if your opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard, um, it's a 5-4 for two mana with flying. That's just really hard to deal with. Um, Relic Golem, as long as they have eight or more cards in their graveyard, it's a 6-6 six, six for three mana. Um, Jace's Phantasm is a 5-5 five, five flyer uh, for one mana, as long as they have ten or more cards in their graveyard. And then Merfolk, Wind Robber, it can draw you a card if the opponent has cards in graveyard. And either way, it's just going to help you mill them so that they have cards in graveyard. Um, Counter Spells... C double uh, is just going to be a copy, a spell, and copy a creature, as long as they have eight or more cards in Graveyard. Thought Scour to make them mill and to help you draw. Cut Your Loss is a really big um, spell to just make them mill half their library. Uh, Low Mage's Domination is going to be a gain control of target creature with mana value uh, th at least three, because they're going to have um, at least eight cards in their Graveyard. Mind Sculpt is going to put the top seven cards of your opponent's graveyard into the library, 
were top seven of their library into the graveyard, which is enough for Vantress. It'll probably hit you to be enough for Relic Golem, and it'll probably be enough for Jace's Phantasm too. Uh, Cephalid Shrine, whenever a player plays a spell counter unless they pay X, where X is the number of cards in all graveyards with the same name, I'm assuming most decks are going to be playing multiples, so just making all your opponent's spells cost less, sure, it'll make yours cost more too, or make their spells cost more, Jesus Christ. Um, it'll also make your spells cost more, but it's kind of whatever. Disturbing Conviction is going to make your opponent mill cards, you also mill, um, and it'll just help take their opponents, or take their cards out of the game. Reconnaissance Mission is going to be a good way to draw, especially since a lot of your creatures, like uh, Vantress, Gargoyle, and Jace's Phantasm have flying. You'll be able to get in and draw cards. It's also cyclable. Um, and then you play Islands. Very simple. Um, this is the hand you keep. You play Merfolk uh, Wind Robber. You play Vantress Gargoyle. You swing in with Wind Robber. They mill a card. Um, you go, you play uh, Wind Robber. Wind Robber. You, each player mills a card, so they have at least two cards in Graveyard. They have three cards in Graveyard. We play an Island. Um, we play Reconnaissance Mission. So, whenever our Wind Robbers get in, we get to draw a card. So we're going to swing. They're milling three total, because I'm assuming they can't block Flyers. We are drawing three cards. We are going to tap Vantress Gargoyle, so that each player mills a card. They have... Three, two, one. Um, they have a total of six cards in graveyard, so they're not quite at Vantress Gargoyle yet. Um, we play. We make the mill one. Uh, we swing in with our wind robbers. Um, they are going to be at ten cards in graveyard. We get to draw three from the Wind Robbers, and now we just keep swinging in. I mean, all of our creatures are Flyers. That was definitely a slower hand than I thought it would be. Um, something like this. Sea double to the bottom. Wind Robber. Wind Robber makes the Millicard. Um, Relic Golem. Um, Relic Golem. Swing, Thought Scour, they mill two, we draw one. Um, Island, Relic Golem, they mill two. Relic Golem, they mill two. Wind Robber, they mill one. They are at eight cards in Graveyard now. And then we swing in for 12, 13 damage. Um, you know, something with Disturbing Conviction, counter something. It's just, you swing in with creatures that are bigger than they should be, um, while also milling just so that those creatures can work. I'm gonna put it in good tier. It's more, like, it's, it's iffy. It's iffy. I don't know. It feels like it should be a lot stronger, and the hands I've played outside of this test have been really strong, so I don't know. Maybe I'm just unlucky. Uh, next up, Artist Temporary. What is this deck? Um, well, I'm glad you asked. Um, we use Disciple of the Vault, Marionette Apprentice, and Marionette Master. Um, whenever our artifacts die, um, opponents lose life. Uh, we use Dockside Chef and Syndicate Trafficker to sacrifice our own artifacts. Um, and then we just gain value by our artifacts dying, too. Things like Iker Wellspring, Mephetic Drought, Nimbervoit Schematic, and Prize Statue. Uh, along with Wizards Rockets to draw, which, yeah, it'll die. Um... Golem Foundry is going to be our other win con on top of burning damage. It's just going to create more artifacts. Um, and swamps. They, there's Literally, there's nothing to explain here. Um, Disciple the Vault. Go. Uh, Iker Wellspring. Draw a card. Go. Disciple the Vault. Mephetic Drought. Draw a card. Um, go. Uh, Dockside Chef, um, Sacrifice, uh, Iker Wellspring, deal two damage because the Disciple of the Vaults, draw a card off of Iker Wellspring dying, draw a card off of Dockside, um, 
go to turn five. Um, Syndicate Trafficker is going to be the cheaper way of sacrificing artifacts. We play a prize statue. When it enters, we create a treasure token. We use that treasure... Sorry. We'll tap one, sacrifice it with Syndicate Trafficker, create another treasure. Uh, We will pay two treasures, which will be more Disciple of the Vault triggers on top of the Disciple of the Vault triggers from Prize Statue. We'll pay that to sacrifice Mephetic Drought. Um, That'll draw us a card. That'll draw us a card from Dockside Chef, because that's what we're using to sacrifice. Uh, We go in. We play a Swamp. We play a Marionette Master. Now, whenever another artifact dies, each opponent will be losing three life. We will create a uh, Servo Token with it. We will play Nimble Rite Schematic, which is going to create a 1-1 artifact creature token. We are going to sacrifice the 1-1, uh, burn for 3. We are going to sacrifice the Servo, burn for 3. Um, go to turn 7. Uh, this, uh, Dockside Chef, sacrifice, draw a card. When it dies, we get to create another 1-1. Uh, one, one. We are going to sacrifice the 1-1, one, one, draw a card, play a Marionette Master, play another Dockside Chef. We've probably burned enough at this point, right? You just keep going through cards, sacrificing artifacts, drawing cards, and burning the opponent whenever an artifact dies. I'm definitely putting this in the good decks. Um, Yeah. Last up, artifacts. This is a simple artifacts, like affinity type deck, um, with a side of Glaze Fiend. Um, So how does this deck work? Well, we get creatures out for free, or for low mana with um, affinity for artifacts like Frogmite and Frogmere Enforcer. Um, we try and get multiple artifacts to enter a turn so we can bump up Glaze Fiend, or we use Imscare Iron Eater to draw us cards, and it's a big beater. Um, Blood Fountain is multiple artifacts, uh, and Bloods we can sacrifice to draw cards. Uh, cranial Plating and Cranial Ram are going to be really big ways to swing in. Golem Foundry, another win con, create golems to swing in with. Uh, Iker Wellspring to draw cards. Liquid Metal Torque is one artifact that either taps for mana, or it can turn our lands, or, well, not our lands, it can tap our, or it can turn our other stuff into artifacts, like our, um, Glaze... The fuck is it turning into an artifact if it can't hit lands? Hello? Um, fuck it. Liquid Metal Torque is bad. We're putting in Mind Stones because they draw cards. Um, Lightning Bolt, Monumental, uh, Corruption is either a way to finish off games or just draw you cards. Um, Terra Slayer's Devastation is a way to create a whole bunch of artifacts and just wipe the board. Darksteel Citadel, Dross Forge Bridge, Mountains and Swamps. Yeah, it's it's just an artifact deck. That's, that's what it is. Um, so we go Swamp. We go Mountain, we go Cranial Ram, it's a 1-1 at this moment. Um, we play Darksteel Citadel, um, it's a 2-1, play Cranial Ram, they're both 3-1s. Uh, Iker Wellspring, they are now 4-1s, we draw a card, we play a Swamp, they are now 5-1s, uh, draw a card, we'll swing for 10 uh, they are now six ones. We will lightning bolt something. Um, Imskir Iron Eater costs uh, six less, so we will actually we won't lightning bolt. Sorry, we're gonna play Imskir Iron Eater. Um, we are going to draw X and lose X, where X is half the number of artifacts we control. So we draw three. And then we just swing in. I mean, basically, it's a it's a fast artifacty deck. Um, we're gonna put it in the good tier. A lot of good consistent decks today. Um, don't get used to it. Well, ASAP. We're going back to inconsistency. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's been Kitchen Table Showdown. Um, I'm really trying to like. I want to put some of these decks together. Um, I just, I haven't had time, I, I have money, I just, I, it's, it's so hard to know what decks to put together, I probably made about a hundred so far, um, and I certainly can't build all a hundred, but, uh, let me know in the comments, um, 
you know, just overall what decks I should build. And, uh, yeah. Peace out. I've also been thinking about doing some, like, live... Not, like, live, but, like, building these decks and then actually playing them against each other, doing gameplay, uh, that sort of thing. So let me know what you think about all that, and I will talk to you... Well, I'm not, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to myself. Wow, this is sad. Peace. MTG Man out. Fuck you.